Chapter 3. I Don't Know About This. He prayed that the Africans' color would change so their descendants would be slaves to the Arabs and Turks. Muhammad had a religion to sell, and by God, he was going to make it sound religious no matter how often he had to reshuffle the facts. Tabari. I asked the Messenger of Allah how many prophets there were. He replied, 124,000. I asked him how many of those were messengers. He replied, 313, a large crowd. That's a problem of incalculable magnitude for Muslims. Bukhari, I heard Allah's apostle saying, From my followers there will be a crowd of 70,000 in number who will enter paradise, whose faces will glitter as the moon. These numbers just don't add up. There must be a mistake. Let's check another hadith. Bukhari. Verily, seventy thousand of my followers will enter paradise altogether, so that the first and the last amongst them will enter at the same time. Sorry, Muslims. Paradise is full. A giant no-vacancy sign is hanging over the brothel door. In fact, it's overbooked. Fifty-four thousand prophets have already been turned away. With odds like this, it's no wonder Muslims are willing to kill for a place in line. Now that we know Muhammad's paradise is overbooked, how about Allah's hell? Bukhari. The prophet said, Allah will say, Adam, I am obedient to your orders. Allah will say, Bring out the people of the fire. How many are the people of the fire? Allah will say, Out of every thousand take out 999 persons. At that time, children will become hoary-headed, and every pregnant female will drop her load. You will see the people as if they were drunk. Allah's punishment will be very severe. There have been more than 10 billion humans born thus far. If one in every 1,000 people get to frolic with Allah's babes, the brothel's capacity must be 10 million, not 70,000. Somebody isn't telling the truth. That news distressed the companions of the prophet too much, and they said, O oh, Allah's apostle, who amongst us will be that lucky one out of the one thousand who will be saved from the fire? He said, Have the good news that one thousand will be turned from Gog and Magog, and the one, the one to be saved, will be from you. Since he wasn't a real prophet, Muhammad didn't know that the people of Gog and Magog would all succumb to Islam. They include today's Iranians, Iraqis, Turks, and Muslims in the Islamic republics of the Russian Federation. The Prophet added, By Allah, I hope that you Muslims will be one of the third of the people of paradise. On that we glorified and praised Allah by saying, Allahu Akbar. The Prophet then said, I hope that you will be one half of the people of paradise. Therefore, a maximum of 35,000 Muslims will burn in lust rather than in Allah's fire. That represents 1 in 90,000 Muslims. Said another way, if you were to fill a stadium with 90,000 Muslims, all but one would go to hell. Unless, of course, the prophet was lying. In that case, they would all go to hell. Gog and Magog is Islam's time bomb, a gift from the Jews. We'll discuss the implications in the last chapter. For now it's sufficient to know that Muhammad was overhyping hell and overselling paradise. If his Islamic God were really God, we're in trouble. He's so unmerciful, unforgiving, unloving, intolerant, and sadistic, 99% of us are destined for hell. Throughout the Sunnah and Quran, Muhammad falsely attributes Muslim prophet and messenger status to biblical characters in order to remake them in his image. Most every prophet-slash-messenger listed in the Quran came from the Bible, including Adam, Noah, Seth, Abraham, Lot, Jacob, Joshua, Jonah, Job, Moses, David, Solomon, Saul, Elijah, Ezra, Enoch, John, and Esau, the Islamic Jesus. Moses is mentioned by name in 500 verses, Abraham in 250. Muhammad's non-biblical list consists of mistakes and myths. 
For example, the oft-mentioned HUD was from the mythical land of Ad, something Muslims can't do. I asked the messenger, who was the first of them? He replied, Adam. I asked him whether Adam was a prophet sent as a messenger. He replied, yes. Allah created him with his own hand and blew some of his spirit into him. Then he immediately fashioned him in perfect shape. So much for fermenting him. Tabari. When Adam was about to die, he called his son Seth and appointed him his heir. Then he taught him the hours of the day and night and how the creatures should worship in each hour. He informed him that each hour had its special kind of creatures to worship in it. Then he said, Son, the flood will be on earth and last seven years. Adam wrote his will and addressed it to him. While there is substantial evidence of the biblical flood, it did not last seven years. And if Adam had been a prophet, he would have gotten his facts right. Further, we were just told that animals are to practice Islam, worshipping at prescribed times. After Adam's death, political leadership fell to Seth. According to a tradition on the authority of the messenger, Allah revealed 50 scrolls to Seth. That would mean that between Adam and Seth, there were 71 scrolls of scripture. You'd think with this vast quantity of divine revelation, the great messenger of Allah would tell us something about their contents, some divine truth perhaps. No, sorry, not even a hint. That's because they never existed. And since they didn't exist, they were hard to plagiarize. O oh, messenger of Allah, how many books did Allah reveal? He replied, 104. Assuming that the Quran was one of them, what's in the other 103? We have this treasure on the authority of the messenger. Tabari. When the angel of death came to seize Adam, he said, You have come too early. Sixty of my years remain. The angel of death replied, Nothing remains. You gave those sixty years to your son David. Adam denied it, and so on that day, Allah established written documents and commanded the use of witnesses. David was 3,000 years removed from Adam, hardly his son. And how can writing have been established while Adam was on his deathbed? Just a moment ago, Allah said he gave Adam 21 scrolls and taught him the alphabet. A paragraph later, we're told, Allah wrote down in a document and had the angels witness it. Whereupon Allah had the document brought down and had the angels produced as witnesses against him. If Allah wrote, and if the Quran was important... Why did it come down in the form of clanging bells and oral recitals rather than scrolls? The answer is, it's easier to get scriptural approval for power, lust, and booty if you're making it up as you go along. Tabari. Adam died. Seth and his brothers were in the regions east of paradise at a village that was the first on earth. Wait a minute. Allah said paradise was up and therefore not on earth. And how can this be the first village if Allah created cities on the third day of creation? We were told that his footsteps became villages en route to Mecca. Somebody ought to have edited this stuff before trying to pass it off as scripture. The prophet's next line further confirmed that he wasn't inspired by God. The sun and the moon were in eclipse for seven days and nights. That's impossible. The sun is eclipsed by the moon, and the moon by the earth's shadows. They cannot both be in eclipse. Even a pretend god ought to be smarter than this. To establish a Muslim ritual, Muhammad said, When Adam died, the angels washed him separately several times with water, and prepared a burial site. They said, This shall be the custom among all Adam's children. In Islam, non-martyrs are buried this way. Martyrs, like today's suicide bombers, are not washed. The blood of innocence smeared on their body is a badge of honor, Allah's signal to escort them directly into paradise, wherever it might be. The messenger said, Your father Adam was as tall as a very tall palm, that is, sixty cubits. He had much hair, and his privy parts were concealed. When he committed the sin of eating from the forbidden wheat tree, his secret parts became apparent to him. He fled about in paradise, but a tree encountered him and seized him by his forelock. When he was about to die, Allah sent down embalming chemicals and a shroud for him. Didn't Allah say that Adam was bald because he bumped into heaven falling down? And why would Allah need embalming fluid in heaven? Tabari. Ibn Ishaq said, He was buried in Mecca in the cave of Abu Qubais, called the Treasure Cave. 
But there's no reason to look for his big bones there because... Noah took them out, placed them in a coffin, and carried them along in the ark. When Noah left the ark, he buried Adam in Jerusalem. And, as mentioned before, Eve spun, wove, kneaded, baked, and did all kinds of women's work. Mm-hmm. 